Marty Cohn, and this is BCTV's Meet the Candidates 2020, sponsored in part by Brattleboro Savings and Loan. This series affords you an opportunity to hear from the folks running for elected office. Today, our guest is Ralph Corbo, the Banish the F-35s party candidate for Vermont Lieutenant Governor. Welcome, Mr. Corbo. Thank you there, Marty and all of Brattleboro. <laughs> okay, great. Well, let's, let's, uh, let's delve right in. Um, first off, why are you uh, running for Lieutenant Governor? Um, I think um, I kind of looked at it uh, as strategically as uh, wanting to, uh, if I'm to further any type of uh, career in uh, serving the general public, I wanted to start out in a uh, in an office where I'd have a chance to sort of uh, get acclimated um, to the uh, specific political uh, situation uh, that exists in something like the Vermont uh, legislature and uh, and the many um, statewide offices that are uh, connected to it. Um, Although I did run for a governor in U.S. House of Representatives, uh, I knew I didn't have a realistic chance in that, but yet had, a, had the uh, platform to present a lot of my progressive ideas. I think the lieutenant governor's race is something that is within the uh, reality of my uh, my acquiring, and so uh, I would use it as a way to, uh, as an instrument, to bring uh, greater service to the people of Vermont. I think uh, at this point in my uh, political career. Okay, thank you. So I guess um, the, the next question would be, what sets you apart from the other candidates seeking the office? Oh, unfortunately, a great deal. Uh, and, and I say unfortunately because of the, uh, the characters of the, some of the uh, especially major characters in this lieutenant governor's race. You know, I, I'm uh, not to uh, toot my own horn, but I've never been someone who's wanted to achieve an office for the, uh, the power and prestige that it holds. And unfortunately, a lot of these other candidates do. I, I think it's, it's basically something that uh, you should uh, go into because you want to uh, serve uh, the, you know, the people of your uh, community and state in a positive way. I mean, I would, uh, I would advocate that there should be no salary for this position. It should only be compensated for uh, expen expenses and such. Uh, so it would be a true, uh, it would attract only those who truly want to uh, serve uh, the public uh, good. Uh, maybe I should quote, uh, I think I've all, I'll use a quote from Plato that's inspired me to what, uh, how you should approach uh, office where uh, he said, uh, at last I came to the conclusion that all existing states are badly governed and the condition of their law is practically incurable without the application of drastic remedies and help of fortune and that the ills of the human race will never disappear until by the gift of the gods, those who are sincere and true lovers of wisdom attain political power, or the rulers of our cities learn true philosophy. I think, uh, unfortunately, a lot of these uh, people that uh, run as candidates and even uh, those who are currently in uh, higher Vermont office uh, don't have any concept of, uh, of a philosophy. They're in it like uh, someone like uh, Phil Scott, basically just to uh, serve the interests of his uh, friends in the uh, business and corporate community. He has no concept of, uh, of real public service to the overall uh, population of Vermont. His, uh, his whole uh, purpose in being there is to, is to further uh, the, uh, the, the industrial sector of Vermont. And uh, I mean, the fact is he doesn't even really govern anyway. He's just a puppet of Jason Gibbs, who is the real force uh, behind all the, um, all the, uh, the, uh, the administration's uh, proposals and uh, and objectives. Uh, he's the real one that uh, that runs the Vermont uh, governorship. So uh, Phil Scott isn't even, isn't even isn't even a real governor. And then some and so to go back to lieutenant governor's race, you've got people running there like Molly Gray, who are who have taken money from people like David Coates, um, a former Wall Street executive who doled out who do, it's shown in, re, uh, in in the records is doled out money to both lieutenant governor races in both the Democratic and Republican Party uh, associating herself with someone of this uh, this low caliber uh, and, and accepting endorsements from uh, 
war criminals like Patrick, Senator Patrick Leahy. Uh, on the other side, you have someone like Scott Milne who goes around uh, praising and, si and singing, and, uh, endorsing, I should say, and singing the praises of, a, of another uh, war criminal and uh, former Governor Jim Douglas, and who uh, at the same time uh, <clears throat> is, um, is a major contributor to uh, Vermont uh, public uh, television and uh, endorses their policy of, uh, of totalitarian closed debate. So you've got, uh, you've got these uh, majorly flawed candidates that are running in the lieutenant governor's race with me. And I think I, I bring a much more a pure and, uh, and basic uh, perspective of wanting to serve the overall public good than these people who are, have all these vested interests involved with them. Okay, so so let me ask you: if if you were elected lieutenant governor, what would be your top two priorities? Well, I think the top two, um, starting with the one that's embodied in my uh, my my uh, party slogan that you're allowed to uh, to put on your uh, with your name, uh, I think uh, that's a major. Uh, uh, objective of mine because uh, it's not only that specific thing of removing the F-35s, but that uh, in, embodies the whole uh, concept of, uh, of trying to move uh, Vermont away from uh, ever getting any more deeply involved in a uh, military industrial uh, economy, which uh, we are to a certain level with uh, companies like uh, General Dynamics and Century Arms and uh, um, trying to remember, uh, UNESCO, I think the other was UNESCO Space Industry, um, uh, trying to m move that uh, us away from that so that we don't become as deeply involved as some other states have uh, become beholden to their uh, military industrial industry within their uh, state. So uh, that would be one of the major things. Well, I mean, one of my major themes is that we should convert Vermont to a green uh, peace economy. Uh, we should uh, make sure we uh, divest ourselves totally of any type of uh, companies uh, with uh, producing any type of weapons of war. And my other uh, <clears throat> main uh, concern of all, the, all the time is the, uh, the natural environment, which uh, we've seen as being uh, rapidly depleted by uh, the continued use of uh, chemical pesticides and herbicides in the uh, agriculture sector. Uh, Many of the uh, reforms and laws are blocked by the, uh, the uh, small uh, traditional large agricultural junta that uh, forms, uh, that uh, use, is a major power, so, uh, power uh, factor in a lot of the legislative decisions. So those would be my two main objectives. Uh, the F-35, which symbolizes the uh, military-industrial uh, military uh, complex so within the state uh, economy, and uh, protecting the natural environment by being a vocal and uh, advocate for uh, for keeping it pure and uh, clean. Okay, thank you. So I'd like to just turn to to a couple of issues. Um, if, if you were elected lieutenant governor, what would you do to ensure that more Vermont families with young children can find and afford childcare? Well, that sort of all, uh, all goes back to uh, the military industrial complex economy. I mean, it's, uh, it's, it's one of the major reasons why we have so much trouble trying to solicit any funds in, in, in this day and age through um, return of our uh, federal tax dollars. When, um, 700, when we have a military uh, defense budget of 741 billion dollars ever increasing every year. I mean, that's a major, it's, it's a thing that uh, unfortunately the uh, many of the other candidates uh, either are uh, totally oblivious of or uh, consciously uh, try to avoid talking about. It's the elephant in the room that it seems like no one wants to talk about. Uh, so I make it my mission to bring that out, that uh, that has to be an issue even at the state level because uh, you can no longer, uh, consider the state uh, separated from uh, what goes on as a federal government. In terms of uh, what we could do uh, while we're fighting that battle to, uh, to reduce the, uh, the wasted uh, tax dollars on the uh, 
federal defense department budget. There's uh, many other things that can be done here in the state. As long as, as, long as our uh, legislators have the political will to uh, want to do something like raise the personal income tax rate on the top 5% of Vermonters, that would bring in a nice uh, substantial amount to the uh, state coffers. You could also end the capital gains tax exclusion. Um, that would also bring back uh, revenue. Enact a financial assets tax on one half of 1% on all stocks, bonds, trusts, and other financial instruments of over $2 million. Uh, these are all things that can be done to raise revenue. It's, uh, the problem is uh, people, a certain, uh, and unfortunately, it's an, I guess a majority of uh, members of the legislature don't have the pol political will to do it because they've got influence from people who are, uh, who are vested in these things and uh, don't want to see it done. Uh, Governor Snelling, back in 1990, uh, whether it's uh, relevant or not, uh, a Republican, uh, knew that from the 1987 recession, revenues had significantly dropped and there needed to be found new, uh, a new source. And he uh, told the legislature, I want you to raise the personal income tax rate in the top 5% of the voters. This is what needs to be done. And he used all his, uh, all his uh, influence and power to uh, push it through, to convince them that this was the right thing to do. Okay. So, so now I want to ask you about the other end of the age spectrum. Um, re recent reports indicate that seniors in Vermont face one of the highest rates of financial insecurity in the nation. H how do you think we can make life for seniors more affordable? Uh, well, along with the idea, like I said, just uh, connected to child care, there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of way to raise revenue for programs for them. But one, I think one of the big things, um, probably the uh, uh, you could probably um, amend the uh, the way the property uh, tax is um, is administered. You could have uh, implement a type of formula for uh, people over a certain age uh, could uh, get reductions. Uh, people. Um, over that certain age also without uh, any children at all in the um, Vermont school system. You could enact uh, an extra type of deduction. Um, like I said, there's, there's, a, there's plenty of ways to raise uh, revenue for uh, programs to help them. I mean, one of the things that, again, related to the property tax is we should raise the rate on the uh, non-residential uh, property tax rate. It's, uh, it's ridiculous that it's so close to the uh, to the rate that the uh, that the full time residents pay, uh, people that uh, are coming in in here and buying up uh, huge expensive est estates have more than enough revenue to uh, to uh, help uh, fund the programs of the state and uh, should uh, should be um, it should be legislated they should uh, contribute more. Okay, thank you. So. so what what is what would be your vision for Vermont in a in a, in a post COVID world? Right, let's 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 be optimistic that that we're going to find a, a cure for or a way to, way out of out of COVID. So, what would be your vision for for Vermont in a post COVID world? Well, like I said before, um, what we need is to um, to affect not only the chain, change in Vermont, but a, but a, a total uh, change, the total direction of what this uh, country has been going down in terms of uh, the uh, economic, cultural militarization of our society. We need to enact a program specifically of wanting to um, transition the, uh, the Vermont economy out of, uh, out of any type of inclusion in uh, in helping to further American empire in the wars of uh, against uh, people in uh, foreign lands. What we need to do is uh, be invested in uh, in state and county communities in a green peace economy that's going to support workers and families' basic needs like health care, minimum wage increases, and pay child care and family leave. Um, I, I think. Uh, the U.S. military budget is supporting the entire discretionary federal budget, uh, including what spent on education, affordable housing, and local economic development combined. So I think uh, 
uh, a philosophy has to be instituted, a change of the, of, of the heart and the way of thinking. Uh, we have to move in a uh, direction of peace and start, a, start a, a vast movement, not only at the state level, but the federal level and on to the global level of, uh, of breaking the uh, power of the military industrial uh, complex and the corporations that uh, foster endless phony wars for endless corporation profits. All right, well, last question for today, for me, is what do you want voters to know about you? Well, I think specifically, as I uh, stated a bit earlier when we talked about uh, what sets me apart, that um, I don't look at this thing really as any kind of, uh, this, uh, this office would be as any kind of stepping stone to any greater uh, glory or power. I just feel I have something to offer the uh, Vermont public from my um, years of uh, just living, having lived under 12 presidential uh, administrations, from my uh, study of uh, state and national and uh, world history, and from my uh, long life experience of working at all levels of society. I just think that I could offer a, uh, like I said, a new fresh perspective from the uh, from when I look around to all the other candidates, uh, none of them are uh, are willing to accept uh, accept the reality of what's going on around us. Like I said, with this uh, vast militarization of the uh, economic, cultural, of the um, of not only the state society but uh, the federal society, uh, they're not uh, they're living in some sort of alternative parallel reality, uh, or I should say, unreality, whether it's um, subconsciously or consciously, and none of the, these issues are being brought brought up, which is which is the only way we could ever uh, turn what's going on in this world, uh, the vast problems that are being uh, brought on to uh, the world society, basically through the, uh, through the continuation of the American empire and its agents of, uh, of destruction. That is the uh, US military and uh, especially here at home, US police forces, uh, which have become militarized into basically a military force here against the uh, citizens of the, uh, of the, of the USA. So I think that's what they have to understand that I'm looking to bring uh, a fresh perspective to it and a, uh, I think uh, a perspective based in reality of what's really going on around us, which is sometimes kind of, uh, obs is kind of obscured by uh, other uh, problems at the, uh, at the more local level. I, uh, have a, I think I have an ability to see through a lot of that and uh, understand what's going on and fueling a lot of these uh, problems and what the core uh, basic, uh, basic causes are. All right, well, Ralph Corbo, the Banish the F-35s party candidate for Vermont Lieutenant Governor, thanks for being on the show. Thank you so much for having me. And uh, I wish uh, Brattleboro um, good, uh, a good recovery from everything that's going on in the last uh, portion of this year and uh, get back to uh, to a way of, uh, of life, a more peaceful, uh, green, peaceful life to transition away from uh, the uh, militarization of this uh, economy and world. Right, thank you. Well, the, the, the general election is Tuesday, November 3rd. Remember, you can vote early in person. You could vote absentee by mail or vote absentee hand delivered on election day. Whichever way works for you, please vote. Thanks for watching Meet the Candidates 2020, sponsored in part by Brattleboro Savings and Loan. I'm Marty Cohn, stay healthy.